In this episode, I speak to Thomas Ryan about how AI can revolutionise sales and customer service. During our conversation, we disclose four key takeaways and Thomas describes how using AI to automatically generate hundreds of articles a month for clients, how it can edit them to build quality content for search engine optimization faster and cheaper than traditional agencies. He also shares how his own daughter is utilising AI to illustrate her children's book, generating hundreds of images until achieving her vision of perfection by modifying prompts. I create clear thinking and decisive leaders who can amplify their influence. Contact me to find out how I can help you or your organisation. And today our guest is Thomas Ryan. How are you doing, Thomas? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good as well. I was wondering, Thomas, do you have a favorite song? Do I have a favorite song? Not really. I like music. So um, I'm eclectic across the board. Depending on what kind of mood you're in. Depending on the mood. That's right. That makes sense. Tell us a bit more about you, Thomas. So I'm the CEO and founder of Bigly Sales. Uh, It's an AI company that helps you do more sales. And uh, my background, I I grew up in the Boston area. I was in the staffing industry for many years. I was running sales teams, um, had my own staffing business. I was doing 10 to $15 million a year. I sat on the board of uh, a much larger staffing company as well. And, you know, I saw that the sales industry was ripe for disruption. And when this AI technology came out, I think this is going to change the world more in the next five years than the internet has in the last 30. That's quite a bold statement. Tell me more about that. So right now, this is the most advanced autocomplete that has ever existed. And that's the way I like to look at it. I think intelligence is really uh, the wrong word for it. It's copying something that has been done before. So. They've basically fed uh, every bit of language that has ever been spoken online, um, every video, every word, uh, every, you know, every song, everything that has ever been written into this giant computer system. And now whenever you put in something, it can give you an output of what you would expect to see. And Mm. sometimes it might be slightly wrong, and sometimes it makes stuff up because that's really what it does. It says, this is what I've seen before that's been written like this, and this is what an output should be. So um, that being said, um, you can say, don't make things up and be very specific, and it will give you a very specific output. And the reason this is happening now and not 10 years ago or 10 years from now is we finally have the processing power to do it. The computer chips can, um, you know, can process everything fast enough to make this thing work because it takes just a tremendous amount of processing power. So, Mm. yeah, it's going to, I mean, it's going to, the things it's going to be able to do over the next five or 10 years are going to be just uh, mind blowing. So when you say revolutionizing sales, how do you see that happening? So the task I'm working on, and, uh, you know, there's a couple of problems with sales and there's uh, some problems with call centers, you know, and, and I can get into a little more detail about the problems that I see out there in the world. And, you know, maybe it's just me, but th- this is the way I see things. Um, so number one with sales is you need to follow up quickly. Uh, the drop off, if you don't follow up with someone in the first hour, uh, your odds of closing that deal is down 90 to 95%. And if you wait multiple days, um, it goes down even lower. So the faster you follow up with someone, the better you do. And every once in a while, you'll see a company that does a wonderful job with this. So I can tell you, Rocket Mortgage, I signed up for a form on Rocket Mortgage uh, a while back. And I hit go and my phone started ringing and I was impressed. And they were the first person I talked to. And there's four or five other companies that I'd filled out their forms before them that called while I was on the phone with Rocket Mortgage. So guess what? I was talking to Rocket Mortgage and they were the people I was most likely to go with for, you know, that home loan, right? Because they called me first. 
So the faster you can respond in sales, the better off that you're going to do, especially if it's something where there's an immediate need, right? So if you think about something for your house, if you have a problem with your AC and, you know, I'm in South Florida, right? So if it's 95 degrees out and your AC goes out, you don't want to deal with someone who's coming to you two days later or a week later, right? You want someone Mm. who's going to be there in an hour. Uh, If you have a plumbing leak, you have some sort of problem with your home. It's stuff that you need to deal with immediately, right? This is like you have a fire, right? You don't want the fire department to get back to you in a week. Uh, You want the (laughs) fire department to come immediately. Yeah. So I think that's the way that most businesses have to look about it, look at this. And most of them don't do it. Most of them are slow to respond. And if you're slow to respond, um, you might as well take those leads that you probably paid to get. Uh, you know, paying for advertising or or doing something to get those leads in and, and take them and throw them in the trash. So um, that's the first problem that I'm dealing with is how to respond to things immediately um, with, you know, what I would consider pretty much perfect information. Um, mm-hmm. The reason a lot of people have an answering service is they're like, hey, I don't know anything about this company, but I'll answer the phone and I'll have someone knowledgeable call you back. Right. So there's a whole service for answering businesses that are out there. I mean, answering businesses are huge. Right. I don't know about this, but I'm going to have the expert call you back. Well, with AI, you can have the expert, right? The expert, you can put in all your company data, you can put in all the information that you need, and you can have it feed that information to the person. Right. So if they need to know your business hours, they need to know if you're open tomorrow, they need to, um, know if they're a good fit, what type of services you provide, why they should go with you, right? All of these, you know, any warranties, uh, what's the best type of, you know, uh, thing to use, what type of insurance should I get, you know, uh, do I have a legal case? Like, that can all be programmed, right? You you just need to put that data in for the AI to digest, and it'll spit out the right answer 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. I always thought those things were an all or nothing, isn't it? Because when People have those bots, but they can't answer a question or they're, or they're really, really super basic. You get more angry than if there was no bot and you had to wait the next day to call someone. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So I hate that with customer support. What, what I usually see, especially with tech companies, is yeah. I'll go and I'll say, hey, I have a problem, right? I'm trying to run my payroll and it's not working right. And my employees, they all kind of want to get paid tomorrow, right? <laughs> You know, they, they, they want to get their paycheck this week, right? So it's relatively timely and immediate. And they're like, here's four articles for you to read. Yeah. Um, you know, do your homework and then come back to us in an hour if you haven't fixed your problem. And it's like, no, that's not what I need. I, I need an answer to my question now. So I think the AI is going to replace the vast majority of level one customer support across the board over the next year or two, right? It's going to it's going to take over because what we have today isn't working well. Um, So the tech is there, uh, you know, and I would love to say that I built this all, but we're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? We're standing on the shoulders of chat GPT and Claude. And, you know, I mean, these guys have gotten billions of dollars from, you know, Microsoft and Amazon and places like that. And we can hook into their system with an API and we can plug in the data in a structured sort of way where any business can import their data in a few minutes. And now you have a, uh, a chat bot that actually works for you, or you could handle that over email, or you could handle that over text. Um, you know, one of the other big things that we're doing is uh, we're pushing people towards a certain action. So if someone is, you know, in a home services business or an illegal business or whatever, you probably want to get some qualifying questions answered, right? So we we get those qualifying questions answered. Are you over the age of 65? Do you own your own home, right? Do you have insurance right now? Whatever you might need for your business. And then we're, um, you know, once that person is qualified, we are booking them into an appointment and we'll automatically schedule an appointment and automatically send appointment reminders to both parties on their behalf. Okay. So the person shows up with no human interaction at all. Mm. So can you foresee any any type of service where that would not be a good idea? Not really. <laughs> I mean, I think 
anything where you're client facing to be able to have a system that can respond to your clients 24 7 365 now i would not use it to give legal advice i might i might say hey here's some basic information but you really need to schedule a call with an attorney for the specifics of your case we can't give you specific legal advice over the phone what's your schedule look like tomorrow uh the attorney is available at two four and six and then i'll schedule them in um, for insurance, you obviously need, you can gather most of the information using the AI. You can have the AI fill out a form, but you're at some point, you're going to need to have a licensed agent come on the phone with them. Mm. But pretty much for any business where you're dealing with customers, um, you know, there's a, a really solid use case for that. Okay. So using the AI will help you be the first responder as it were um and i can see the clear case for customer support in what are are they the main customer support and scheduling we're doing customer support and scheduling and what we're working on next is the ai call center so um you can actually call and have you called comcast recently or or someone along those lines AT&T or Comcast or a, a big bank, maybe a Bank of America? Uh, no, I'm in the UK. You're in the UK. Okay. Uh, if you, you know, uh, I can tell you one I called in the UK where I had an experience was uh, British Airways. Okay. Um, I sat on hold for an hour and a half waiting for someone to get to me on British Airways one time when I had a problem with my flight. Wow. I was calling after hours, right? Uh, because I'm in the U.S. And, you know, the hours, uh, it was a little later over there. And they're like, oh, there's seven people in front of you. And apparently they had one agent on staff, right? So mm-hmm. what this can do for call centers is you can, it gets rid of the wait in line problem, right? They probably didn't want to pay to have a bunch of people sitting around twiddling their thumbs most of the time. But that meant if five or six people called at the same time, people were going to be waiting around for an hour plus. So they didn't want to spend the money to have a bunch of people just paid to be sitting around, which I, I understand, right? They're running a the business. Um, but it's also a terrible customer experience for the, for the folks that had some sort of issue. So you have angry, negative customers who said, boy, I don't like British Airlines because of this terrible experience I had, right? Yeah, makes and sense. This fixes it. This fixes the from the customer standpoint. Now you don't have to get transferred to three or four different people, right? You have one person who can, you know, or one bot that can handle all your questions for you, where you can feed all of your data in. You can feed in hundreds of pages of information. We put it into a vector database who can find everything quickly. And then it can answer any of those questions pretty much instantaneously with your data that you fed in being the source of truth that it uses. Um, So it can answer any question. You don't have to get transferred around to different departments Um, and it can schedule anything that you need to schedule. So, I mean, I think every major company is going to be moving over to this in the next year or two. I mean, Mm. everyone. Okay. So, in what other ways can AI revolutionize sales then? So, right now, there's, if you look at the AI products that are out there, so what we're doing, we're doing specifically from customer communication standpoint, that's the angle that I'm tackling, right? But there's so many different things that you can use it to do right now. So, uh, I have a friend who's running a company and, um, this person is using it to do scheduling for stuff. So they'll, they're doing scheduling for trucks. They'll have an order come in and it used to take someone 20 minutes to go and take all the data from the order that came in and then input that order into the computer system. And they're having the AI scan the data fields and fill it out automatically. And now it's saving them 20 minutes per order and they get something like a thousand orders a day. And that's one company and that's one use case. So anything where there's information that needs to be inputted into a particular database, right? You don't need to take 
that data by hand and put it in anymore. You can have the computer do that. Uh, you can have it, you know, do it with better than human accuracy, basically instantaneously within a few seconds. Um, you know, so that's another use case there for sales. And again, now you're going to have less issues with that, right? You're, you're not going to have, you're not going to have data issues. Um, assuming the order they sent you is right, it's going to be inputted correctly into the system. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, we're doing SEO as well. So if you talk to an SEO company, um, they all would give you the same pitch. We'll write you six articles, eight articles, 10 articles, and we're going to charge you two, three, 4,000 bucks a month. And, um, you know, these are going to be great articles with all the right keywords for your business. And, you know, in about six months, you'll start ranking on Google. Well, we're doing that with AI and we're doing 600 articles a month right now um, because you can write the thing so much faster. You can still put in the same keywords. You can still tell it what needs to be in that article. Um, you can just automate that process and do it at, you know, a hundred times the volume uh, for less money than I would hire in that service. Mm. Right. So I think, there's an, I think there's an issue though about the output of some of that content in the sense that it, it can feel very bland and generic. It can. Um, it writes better than I can write, but you have to give it a personality. So if the problem is generally the prompt, right? Mm -hmm. So you can give it whatever personality you want. I can say, I want you to write this in the voice of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And it will, you know, say, hey, jabroni, right? Like, this is uh, what's going on. Uh, you can pick any voice that you want, I, you know, so... You can give it a voice, you can give it a personality, um, and frankly, if you're a professional writer, I'm not going to say, you know, it's a better writer than uh, Stephen King or than, you know, some, you know, prolific professional writer, but if you don't write for a living, it's probably going to do a better job than you, and then what we have is people edit it. Right. So I have someone who edits those articles afterwards. If we didn't have someone editing the articles, we, we might be able to do 6,000 or 60,000 articles a month. Right. But we're editing those articles afterwards to make sure there is quality there, to make sure the prose is, looks good, to make sure they're not repetitive. To, right. So we do have a human looking at it afterwards. And that's what I think is going to happen with most of this. It's just going to make tedious things easier for people to do. Um, it's going to do most of the grunt work for you. So you know, there's, yeah, go ahead. It, it kind of makes me think a bit like TikTok dance videos where you look at one individually and you think, yeah, that's really highly skilled or whatever. And they look great, but they're all the same, even though they're different, they're all the same. And it's the same with, I'm seeing a lot like on LinkedIn where, you see pictures and you know they're AI because they're all the same. They're different. They're nice. They're good, but they're the same. And it just leaves you feeling a little bit. I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to, I don't know even know how to describe it. They're just. It can feel soulless. That's the word I'm looking for. And I've noticed that um, with articles as well, in the sense that, they're okay. Yeah, and we're version one They're right okay. now. This is like, you know, version one of the iPhone or version one of, this is version one of anything, right? We're, we're at the very beginning. So I think you're absolutely right. But if someone did a better job prompting that article, it would sound much better. Um, you know, they're, they're probably using one of these tools that are out there for writing this stuff where they're going to chat GPT and they say, write me an article about this. And make it a thousand words. And ChatGPT spits it out, and makes it a thousand words, and it uses the same, you know, beginning to uh, the sentence every time. Well, if you give it a different voice or you tell it to talk in a different way, you can change how that output feels. So what I say is that, you know, right now it feels like I'm talking to a Labrador, right? I, I feel like I'm talking to my dog. You know, it comes in and it's kind of happy and you know, bubbly and. Very middle of the road and everything. It doesn't have a lot of personality, 
right? But if you say to talk in the voice of, you know, Boris Johnson, right, it will have a very different personality to it. Um, and you can do that, you know, talk in the voice of Gandhi like Gandhi would. You know, so yeah, if, guess... if you ask it to do something a little different, if you prompt it a little differently, it will it will write differently. Um, and it gets better as it improves, as there's more characters and as it can look at more things, it gets better. But yeah, occasionally can feel very soulless. I, I certainly agree with that. Yeah, and I suppose if you're using content to build a brand, but what you're but you're using AI to build that brand for you, and you're using different voices, it still isn't your voice. No, it is not your voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, not not generally. Um, maybe there's some people who write all their own articles, but you know, it's really hard to do that if you're running a business. <laughs> you know, usually they give it to the intern to to do the article, and frankly. The quality of the articles that we're seeing, that we're writing, are better now than they were with an agency that we were using beforehand. They were better than the freelance writers we were using beforehand because the AI is just so much more knowledgeable on the topics, right? If if you're looking for anything about computers, especially, I mean, um, it's freakish how much knowledge is out there that it has. Uh, you know, I think one of the best use cases for for anyone is just if you have a problem on how to do something on your computer, just go ask it. And if you don't understand, say, hey, I don't understand this thing. Can you take that a step back? And can you go into detail on exactly how I have to do this step by step? And it will lay out everything for you. So it would take problems that, you know, you don't know how to solve. And now you can solve it generally within a few minutes or, or a few hours very easily. Mm -hmm. right? and I know people who've written whole apps, right? They don't know how to code. They've never spent a day of computer science classes in their life. And they sit down and they say, I'm going to do an app today. And then four hours later, they have an app. I say, mm. How do I publish that to the app store? And they publish it to the store. My daughter's doing a children's book right now. And she's using it to illustrate all the images. Right? And she doesn't like something. She says, no, I don't like that one. I want to change. I want to do this. I want to do that. Right? And she's been working on it for you know months now. But... Um, it's just because she's a perfectionist with how she wants everything to look. Um, yeah. you know, for her, she's come up with hundreds of these different images to put on there and says, I want the dinosaur to be bigger. I want the iceberg to be, you know, smaller, whatever. Um, and you know, she's creating these things by the hundreds. Sounds good. So before we end, um, I'll talk today. Is there anything that you want to share with us or tell us that we haven't covered? I mean, just with how things are in the world, I think this is mm. the most valuable skill that anyone can pick up, right? If you're worried about losing your job, go play around with ChatGPT, right? Go play around with MidJourney. Go play around with, you know, these tools that are out there. Learn how to use them. It's the most valuable thing that you can possibly do for your career to um, allow you to do the work of five or 10 people in a fraction of the time. You can, mm. You'll be able to figure out a way to automate almost anything. You can automate data collection using a tool like Vantabuster. Um, I mean, you can. there's nothing that you can't automate using these tools right now, and they're only going to get better. Do you have a favorite tool, or, you, or do you use just like a lot of them and synthesize from there? It's horses for courses. Right. It's, um, you know, I like uh, Mid Journey for um, graphics. Right. Um, I, I mean, I could screw up a stick figure. And, uh, you know, we did these beautiful <laughs> things for our brochure. And I just went in there and I said, I want a picture kind of like this. And I put it in. And, you know, 10 seconds later, I have the picture. Um, for the data collection, uh, I know we're using Phantom Buster and we're using Rose uh, AI. Um, you know, so those are great ones for data collection, for the LLMs, for the large language models. We're using ChatGPT and we're using Claude. And, you know, uh, I mean, I think if you start with that, those are some really great tools that will save you a lot of time, you know, a lot of time, a lot of headaches. 
And how does Claude compare to GPT? It's good for different things. Um, they they both write pretty well. Um, one of the things I like doing with Claude is when we're trying to do something shorter, we're trying to come out with a tweet, we're trying to come out with a text message because we're doing the autoresponding for a lot of the text messages. And it's hard getting ChatGPT to say, I'm only going to do 160 characters, where Claude is much better at actually coming up with messages that are 160 characters or less. Right? And that's just the limit uh, before the phone company charges you again. So we'll say limit it to 160 characters or limit this response to you know 320 characters. And Claude can do that much better than ChatGPT. Hmm. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. And, you know, uh, I think this was wonderful. Thank you. And thank you out there for tuning in to the Maverick Paradox podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Germain, and I hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. The Maverick Paradox. Judith Germain is an author, speaker, consultant, mentor, and trainer, and the leading authority on Maverick leadership. She is the founder of the Maverick Paradox, which supports organizations to enhance their leadership capabilities and to help business owners develop and grow their businesses. Judith enables individuals, business owners, and organizations to improve their impact and influence. She is also HR Zone's leadership columnist, an international online radio host, and her expert opinion has appeared in national, international, and trade press.